Joining me today to talk about Homecoming Season 2 are Michael Bloomberg, creator and executive producer, Eli Horowitz, creator and executive producer, and Carl Patrick Alvarez, director and executive producer. Before I talk to the guys, uh, here's, let's watch a clip. Everything all right, miss? Where are we headed tonight? He came up here. Who did? I don't know. I'm here to help, okay? Okay. I hear you saying there's a guy and he ran off up here. Did he do something to you, this guy? What is this? Intriguing. So, uh, Eli and Micah, uh, talk to us how we got to where we've just seen the show. Uh, tell me how you got past uh, season one. Well, I think one of the things that we're kind of excited about is the way the two seasons, the connection between them sort of slowly unfurls. So that's going to be kind of a non-answer, but, you know, that clip is from the first episode of the next season. And at this point, you might not know how they relate. And I think that's kind of the fun of it. We're establishing this character, this new plot, so that in some ways the season seems like its own entity. And then as the season progresses, you'll see the many ways that it links back to what you saw in season one. Yeah, we were excited when we started, we were excited when we started working on season two too, at the idea of almost starting the season in an unrecognizable uh, place with a new face, introducing our new character. And then the tension and excitement would be watching how they went their way back to the world that they, the viewers would recognize from season uh, one. Did it feel like you had a blank page starting with season two now that you've gone past the, the podcast, uh, Eli? Yeah, it was really freeing and it was a new experience because season one actually stayed pretty close to the podcast. And the whole story very much was an audio creation. And the way we structured the plot and the characters and the scene was very much about having these two people in the room talking. And so that was exciting in a lot of ways and limiting in other ways. So it was really fun season two to have the whole world available to us, both more action, more movement, there's bigger setting, it's a lot more outdoors, a lot more variation. So yeah, it was a real a real playground. Micah, how did you find that? Yeah, I mean, I agree. Like we we pulled a lot of the material from season two of the podcast into season one when we were writing. So we did kind of have a, a sort of a wide open space. And then I think it was um, where we left off in season two TV show with Temple was kind of like an area that we discovered and got into a lot more as we were writing the show. So that was sort of our bridge between the two seasons. And I think by that point, the podcast was so much a memory and we'd learned so much from making one whole season of television that we were excited to sort of bring what we'd learned to bear in a totally different format. And I think that shows in the way that season two feels and the way that Kyle directed it, it's sort of freed from the chains of these small rooms with these people talking. It feels more wide open and, and kind of out in nature. So yeah, by the time we finished writing season two, I think a lot of the principles that guided season one had, had kind of um, moved away. The, the second season certainly feels slightly less claustrophobic. Was that, uh, was that on purpose, I guess? Uh, for you, Mike, but also Kyle from a, from a directing point of view. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I'll certainly, you know, Kyle can certainly speak to the aesthetics and everything like that, but like psychologically and character wise, we wanted to draw that distinction. You know, we wanted to get out of the season one is about so much about unfurling very slowly what you know and how you understand the situation. When you start season two, there's so much that's known. So we were excited about drawing a contrast there, getting our characters outside, moving at a different pace, having things be more kinetic, having more action, things like that. That was one of the draws to me when I first read it that was exciting, having loved season one so much and loved Sam's aesthetic approach, the challenge was, okay, how do we translate that feeling when so much of that feeling was the homecoming facility set, right? So, okay, so that, and that set was so meticulously designed to fit that tone, but now we were going to be in forests and lakes. And so you kind of had to try to reconceive how to technically approach these scenes to, to so that it still felt like homecoming, but even on a larger canvas. Yeah. What was some of the, what was some of those influences that you were looking for? The, the show, obviously the second season starts it's quite dark as we've seen there from the clip and it, and it continues a little bit like that in the 
first few episodes. Re references, you know, aesthetically for me, in a lot of ways, um, Sam was digging into this well of like love of 70s films that I shared. So in a lot of ways, um, I, I didn't want to diverge from that well, but maybe maybe move a little bit on. I'd say there's like a maybe less Pacula, Pacula, I'm always going to mess that up, and a little more De Palma, you know, if you had to be if you had to be referential about it. But um, but it was really more I tried to use season one in a way um, as a little bit of a North Star, but not ever trying to replicate it. So even though we have a long take, um, it wasn't like, oh, we're going to do the long take from season one, but better. It was, oh, no, there's a place here or bigger, I should say. There's a place here for it, but we're going to come into it from a different kind of point of view. And so it was always just about not a one to one translation, but taking inspiration both from season one, but also the, the stuff season one was referencing. Eli, talk about being outside of the, uh, the Homecoming Transitional Support Center. It gives you an opportunity for, for a different kind of story. And certainly in the first few episodes, it, it, um, new character as well. Yeah. Um, as Micah said, you know, the first season was so much about that confinement and just studying this space bit by bit. And this really, from a writing perspective and from a viewing perspective, hopefully, there's really a sense of anything could happen from scene to scene and episode to episode. It was also, I think, a production challenge that also Kyle can talk more about. You know, season one was so homey. We just spent so much time in this one giant set that had, you know, the 18 rooms, all the dorm rooms, Heidi's office, the cafeteria. It was all in this one building, one soundstage. This time we were up at Lake Arrowhead, driving all around LA. It was a real adventure. You know, on the water, there was uh, there's some stuff going on. Kyle, well, did you uh, sometimes wish you were back in the uh, the center, please? <laughs> the uh, it was certainly you know we shot our exteriors first, and there was certainly like a little bit of a relief ending on the sound stages. You know, it was a, it was a tough shoot because you have um, you're not just trying to get the words, which sounds uh, I, that sounds derogatory towards other television. I don't mean that you're. You have, I mean, we had complex shot lists. Every day there were cranes, techno cranes and helicopters and study. I mean, every, it's probably one of the only times, you know, we, uh, in my life where you get to just sort of throw every toy at the show and you're supposed to, right? It's all contributing to this design that Mike and Eli created, which is, you know, writing a show around taking that visual tone um, into consideration. And that's such a gift because it's not it's not as common this day and age. So, yeah, it made, it made for it made for tough days. Uh, but I think you know everyone was sort of the great thing about coming in on season two is everyone know knew what we were achieving. So when things were hard, people understood why it was hard. No one was ever like, "Can we just do this an easier way?" Every, everyone kind of understood like, "No, no, this is this is what this show is, and we have to fight for for these the literal angles." Uh, Micah, uh, talk to me about Janelle Monae, um, new character. Uh, wakes up in the middle of uh, of this lake and and it's a bit of a mystery right yeah so um we uh wanted to center around this new character and like i said we wanted to start in a very unfamiliar strange place and then janelle is kind of the eyes and ears that we see season two through and um we were so excited to get the chance to work with her I, i've never seen someone craft a performance um in quite that way. I mean, she brings this incredible style and physicality and and precision to everything that she does. So it was like um, a character that we knew was so multifaceted and not to give too much away. We thought that a person who could inhabit so many different styles and so many different mediums would be the perfect um, vessel to sort of carry out this role. She, um, she joked a couple of months ago that she's a magician and uh, it sort of feels like that in the show. She's a, a like a the as a character, she's sort of a puzzle box herself, and so I think there's a real affinity between Janelle and who she plays on the show. Uh, uh, and maybe Eli, how hard is it to talk about this show without giving uh, giving too much? It's hard. It's hard. Micah just found the most basic. You know, we're not talking about the final episode twist, whatever. Like the most basic fact of it are hard to talk about and i really do think that's gonna be a lot of the fun of of watching it of experiencing is that it's not just like start with a bang and then you kind of like draw it out and then you ha have a reveal at the end we're trying to kind of reshape what the story is on an episode to episode basis um but it does make it difficult to talk about on panels like this one or in the press material so we apologize but i think it's worthwhile 
but it makes it more fun to watch. Uh, no, great. Well, guys, uh, Micah, Eli, Kyle, thank you very much for joining us today.